Alrighty guys, welcome back to the to the crap show. I'm working on this thing kind of in scramble mode a little bit because I I'm gonna start the day with a list. So here's the list of all the stuff that I feel like I need to do yet. I put the date on there just for when I wrote it. Uh, track day is on the 20th, so technically you have five days or four days depending how you want to look at it. But there's a lot of stuff to do. A lot of it is this little stuff like putting on the intercooler couplers and tying up the fuel line, stuff that's going to be real quick. But some of it's going to be a little bit bigger. I would say like maybe figuring out a serpentine belt length situation, but like drive shaft, I'll just bring the stuff in and drop that off. That won't be a big deal, but that takes time because got to drive there and do all that stuff. Installing the shifter, getting the shifter linkage set up, that'll probably take a little bit. So going to kind of try to knock out some of the easy stuff today like doing the intercooler couplers um, bolting down the fuel cell tying up some of the lines stuff like that so that's where we're at I'm gonna go to the store get like some vacuum line some vacuum couplers or like some plugs and a couple bolts and just start knocking stuff out I'm missing a lot of parts too yet like the fittings that I talked about in the other video like the dash 8 fittings that I need and the drain line hose and the feed fitting so it's kind of funny because i bought the feed line but i didn't buy the drain line but i bought the drain fitting but i didn't buy the feed fitting <laughs> so kind of messed that up a little bit but it happens caught it early enough so should still have some time and worst case i'll just go to a different track so the 20th is at wisconsin international raceway it's 15 minutes from my house so i'd prefer to make that one but uh, if not, there's another track that's open later in the year. So let's get going. Alrighty, fellas and chinchillas. So we got a little bit more done. Got about half of the list done now. And some of it I highlighted. I highlighted the stuff that was all electrical related because I feel like I want to do that all at the same time. So like wiring fuel pump, wiring lights, battery, battery diffuse box, starter power, wiring, all that stuff. So kind of highlighted that just so I can do it all around the same time. And then I will show you kind of what I got done. So I got the feed lines done. All the intercooler piping is solid. I did have to redo how I originally had that on there. So that took some extra time. Got the O2 sensor bung welded on. I did start to do the drain. Uh, but my issue there was I had the 45 degree fittings. I originally forgot to order them. And then when I ordered four of them, uh, they only sent two of them, so they we were going back and forth for about a day, and I sent them the picture of the shipping label. They verified the weight, and they're sending me two new ones, but that's going to take a little bit longer. I know a local guy, a buddy of mine, had one, but that's not going to be enough, so I just am waiting. Got the boost reference for the wastegates done. I just kind of ran it from the back line there, and then put a T in here. And these probably have like a six or eight pound spring in them. So I'm going to have to add a controller to turn that up. Got the uh, radiator hoses done. And oh, the uh, rest of the fuel line. Got that all done. These fittings came in. Finished up the fuel line. So that is solid. All done in the back. And then I just got to add injectors and bolt it in. So that should be nice. I think that's about all I got done up here. I did start to work on the seats, the seat brackets. And you can see that seats flopped right down there. That's because I just threw it in there and gave up on it. So it did come with, the car came with seat brackets, which were not even close. They weren't even close. So I honestly, I spent probably two hours, maybe more, just messing around with these seat brackets and trying to get these seats to fit. I don't know what seats these are, but um, I did order a different bracket for it. So that should work with these seats. So then I'll do that and the seat belt, I got the five point harness seat belt. That's all ready to go in. But you can see I did take the harness back out because that's the next thing I'm gonna work on. So if you look over here, I got the harness back on the table and this is just the harness that I had in the 350Z before and the fuse box that I made. So I made this little fuse box. It's like a $10 little fuse block thing. It's kind of real messy. 
But what I'd like to get into is the package that BP Automotive sent me. So BP Automotive sent me this package. I, I did open it, so I'm not going to do like a complete holy moly surprise unboxing video, but I do want to open it up and show you what's in there. And we'll go over that. And then next video I want to dedicate just to uh, using this for this harness. So let's get into that. Okay, so getting into this stuff here, everything is all open. So BP Automotive, they sent me this stuff. Um, just sent it to me just to test it. So knew I was building something, saw that I have other harness videos and have some experience with doing the wiring. So they sent me two different types of their fuse boxes. They have a, a base version. We call it the base version and then the premium version. So these are the sets of instructions and shows how to how to do everything. A wiring diagram and uh, this thing's actually kind of cool. I think this is the one I'm going to use in the Mustang and this one might use in the truck if I decide I want to uh, redo that one. So these are kind of cool. It has a little diagram on the back side of the cover. So it shows you exactly what the fuses and the relays are for. It comes with a roll of tape and an OBD2 uh, harness. So that's kind of cool. I was pumped to see that because I was just going to buy one of those OBD2 harnesses or I was going to go to the junkyard and then um, cut one out of a vehicle. But I have two of them now, so that's perfect. Uh, it's exactly what I need and it's basically going to just kind of replicate what was on here and should help clean it up a lot a lot more than what it is now so big thanks to these guys they just messaged me and said hey you want to try some stuff so they also sent um, a couple of their crimp samples so they have a video on their YouTube channel going over one of the China harnesses like the China two or three hundred dollar harnesses that a bunch of people have been getting lately and they kind of dissected the harness and wanted to show exactly what was kind of wrong with them and what the issues were so they sent in some crimp samples and then they sent this thing in which I think is kind of cool it's an ultrasonic welding they called it I've never heard of that before but it's like no solder solderless ultrasonic and that's how they do all their uh, connections inside the harnesses and then they heat shrink them and they have like a you know like the epoxy filled heat shrink that they do so they sent in some heat shrink for the harness, two shirts, fuse block, mounting brackets, new covers for the ECU, because those are usually b brittle and they crack all the time when you try to take them off, or most of the time they crack. Um, and then little plugs to go back in the ECU port. So sometimes you rework the harness and then you pull a bunch of wires out and then these things can go back in and then plug the hole so you don't get moisture back in there. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So this one actually has, oh, I shouldn't have pushed those back down. This one actually has two fans and it has an AC setup. So if you want to run air conditioning, this one's set up with the circuits to run air conditioning. Nice label inside there. So yeah, this is kind of cool. I'm kind of excited to wire this thing up and see how it, see if we can make this thing look a little bit better. It's only a plan. So that'll probably be in the next video. I'll do a whole video just on that. But I wanted to kind of show you guys because I know I've been talking about it for a little bit. So I'm going to start rambling. But before I go in, I did get uh, my shifter done. I spent a few hours tonight and got the shifter in and working. And everything works pretty good. Oh, it's hard to do one-handed. There. Hard to do one-handed to get it in reverse, but yeah, everything works and uh, Kind of excited getting closer and closer. Oh, I also Cleaned out the diff. So one of the things that was on the list was Cleaning out the diff wherever that was so for some reason the differential in the back It didn't have the cover on it, but all the holes are like completely plugged with dirt So I don't know what that was about but all of them, it was like somebody took dirt and like packed all of the bolt holes full of dirt. So I had to take like a little drill bit in there, clean all the dirt out, and then slice some slits in a bolt and then kind of ream out the hole. It took me probably like an hour just to clean the mud out of the bolt holes in there. 
and then I cleaned all the leaves and junk that was in the diff out of it. So that's clean, ready to go. I got to put the cover on, get some bolts for it, but um, closer and closer. <laughs>